Welcome to the Deeper Life Bible Study, coming to you from Identity Church in Deltona, Florida. Now let us hear the expounding of the Word of God, a now word for this moment. So grab your Bible, sit back as we delve into the Word of God, and hear the Logos and Rhema Word. Last week, I met with a group of friends of ours that are solid seasoned believers and have known me a long time. So they're a little used to me. And I began to share with them an, uh, a vision that I had and the revelation I got from them. And I got the look. And it's that, ooh, it's a woo-woo person book. You know how they kind of glance at each other like, yeah, out there. So I went to the Lord and asked him, you know, really, that wasn't that tough. Why are they looking at me? like that. And he said, you're using a language that's not within their construct. And I went, oh, so I'm going to push you a little bit with a language that's maybe not in your construct. But there's things to gleam. And just because we have a culture that may be different, let's find the gem in that culture and in that person because we're the body. We all have different function. And so my function is a seer. It's, it's an amazing thing. The thing the Lord showed me is I, w I have this place that I go and meet him. And it's high on a hill, and the grass is tall. And there's this giant oak tree. And he leans up against it. And there's this stream that flows by. And we talk. And I, he had come a long way up the hill, so I reached down into the river and gave him a drink from my hand. And it occurred to me in that moment, this is the only time that I'll ever be able to do that. Because Jesus died and rose as a human being. He's alive as a human being. And in heaven, after I die, I'm spirit. I'll never be able to touch him like I do as a human being reaching to him. It's an extraordinary moment where realms come together, where he reaches down from heaven and we reach up from earth. It's an amazing thing. And I just want to share with you a little bit about how that looks in scripture, just so we have some anchored background, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve lived in the garden. And in the garden, there were not separate realms. It was one room. Heaven and earth was one realm. It says in Genesis 3, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. In the garden, heaven and earth was one, and that got separated by sin. But Jesus came back, died, rose again, so that we could be restored to that same relationship. John 10 says, I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and live forever, and will go in and out and find pasture, spiritual security, amplified. Once we die, we'll never be able to function like we do right now. This is an extraordinary time. Don't waste it. Don't waste what this amazing possibility that you have. Jesus was a man who already moved in both realms, even on earth. He, had to oper he was trying to show us what it was like to operate as a human being on earth with the Father. He says, you know, after the man... Um, at the pool was told to rise, take up your bed and walk, and the Jews sought to kill him. But Jesus answers in John 5, 19, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in a like manner. For the son, Father loves the Son and shows him all the things that he himself does and will show him even greater works than these that you may marvel. Jesus was seeing into that realm. 
even though he was in himself God, he had to operate by the rules of earth. But yet he was seeing. He was seeing what the Father was doing. I believe that heaven and earth glimpse at the possibility of the garden again. Each one of us must have an intimate relationship with the Lord. You can't have a personal relationship. That, that little line annoys the heck out of me. Because I, I have um, a uh, personal relationship with you and with you and with you. But I don't have an intimate relationship. I have an intimate re relationship with Gary. I have a history with Gary. I have, he knows when I'm upset. He knows when I'm mad. He knows when I'm celebrating. And he knows that because he's walked with me a very long time. And we, we know each other. It's not just one-sided. We both know each other. We both, it's like when you ever see an older couple dance together, they, they don't have to watch each other's clues. They know it. And it's smooth. And it's flawless. And they just move as if they were born together. But that came over time. That didn't happen suddenly where you watch two young teenagers dance together and it's like, ooh, that's kind of ugly. But, you know, it, it takes time. Those relationships take time. Relationships with the Lord take time. So I'm going to share with you part of my relationship with the Lord. And how he works with me is he shows me things. And in the kingdom, the world teaches concepts. The kingdom teaches experience. So I come from the, my experience to share with you. It may sound different than what you're used to hearing. You know, we're a pretty progressive church, but I thought I was talking to a group of people that were pretty progressive, and I got the look, so <laughs> we might have it here. Um, I believe that a seer is a person who sees. This is the definition. In the Bible, a seer is another name for prophet. See 1 Samuel 9.9. 9. But more specifically, a seer was a prophet who saw visions, pictures or scenes in the mind's eye, or in dreams, or even in one's natural eye, God spoke through these people, through prophets, in different ways. And one of those was through visions. Accompanying the ability to see visions, the seer was given insight into what God was saying about the visions. In the Old Testament, we have um, lots and lots of evidence of what that looks like. I'm going to give you just a couple. Jeremiah. And the word of the Jeremiah 1, 11 through 13. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Now, he didn't ask him what he heard. He didn't ask him what he felt. He asked him what he saw. And Jeremiah gave him exactly what he saw. He didn't expand. He just gave what he saw. The New Testament, you see Paul stating, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was taken up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. But God knows. Stephen in Acts 7, 55 and 56, he being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Very profound. I think Revelation pretty much speaks for itself. I haven't quite wrapped my head around Revelations yet. There's so much imagery, and it's unfolding over time. And I think we'll have so much more to get from that. And I think that's the beauty of a, of a vision versus a word, because a word is pretty accurate. You know, 
it's pretty straight on. You can't really kind of lean. But when you're talking about, you know, bugs that have the faces of men, <laughs> and, you know, you have to, you have to kind of ask God, what are you saying? What are you doing? Why are you showing me that? If you're not a seer, you have other gifts. See, the thing about the body of Christ is we all have a piece. My husband has been practicing trying to be a seer. I have begun to share with him some of the things he's, I see, and um, he's trying really hard. We've been working on visualization. <laughs> he just can't do it. It's not in him. It, he is um, brought by an unction of the Holy Spirit. He just knows that he knows. Pastor Charlie hears a word, and we all hear, oh my gosh, I wish I heard like that. But if we all heard like that, there'd be this great vacuum of what else was missing. We all have a piece. And the more pieces we have, the greater understanding we have. We can't forget that each of us is valuable. Each of us carries something extraordinary within us. And we get to all when we come together. That's the importance of the church, is that when we come together, we get to share what each other is getting, which helps us attain those realms that normally by ourselves we have to fight to get to. Makes it easier. Worship makes it easier. I am going to share a couple of the old uh, visions that I had. The Lord uses visions for me in a variety of ways. One is a to instruct. This is a tough uh, word that he was teaching me. It's from July 2000. He said, go open up all your old journals. So that, that was kind of a painful experience. Um, lots of things, lots of fun stuff, lots of revelation that you hadn't seen in a long time. This was about a young girl that was a diver. My husband, we had teenager, he was the coach of the dive team. And this young girl was on another dive team, 16 years old. And, you know, we knew of her, you know, we knew the other teens. And about six to eight months later, our uh, group of pastors were asked to come pray for her. And we arrive at her house and Here's this 16-year-old who's about 75 pounds, ha, is hooked to every kind of everything, um, oxygen, dying from cancer. And we fought hard. But while I was praying for Marla's parents, he showed me in complete black and white only, which is unusual for me because usually they're in color, a train packed with Jews coming down the railroad tracks. It's coming to a concentration camp. And you hear the moaning and the crying out, silence and screaming. And they began to unload them. I was sitting at a table on the other side of the railroad tracks as they marched them to me. I got to decide who went to the work camp who went to the showers to die. I completed my duties because I, not because I agreed, because, but because this was my job. And to disagree would mean death. So I felt nothing shielded from suffering. That vision was for Marla as mom as well as for me. The next day I asked the Lord why he said, I've saved so many, but you have killed many. You are responsible as long as you decide. Then I said to him, I don't want to decide, Lord. I don't want to decide. I don't want that responsibility. And he said, then you must get in line. In fact, you have to get at the front of the line. So that even if there is physical death, you will live forever. Do not embrace the suffering. Embrace me in the suffering. Lord, then what is my responsibility? He shows me the scene 
where the paraplegic is lowered while their friends tear him down the roof. And then he shows me thousands of sick who at the, were at the back because they could not get to Jesus because of the sheer number, space, and time. He said, your job is to get them in front of the master. The rest of the responsibility is the Lord's. Marla died. Marla lives. Lord, I pray that we tear down their roof to get them to you. That's a tough word. That's a tough word. But he knew exactly where my heart was and what would trigger a truth in me. He spoke about things that, to instruct me, he knew what, how I felt about the Jews in the concentration. He knew exactly that was the language he was going to give me. The fact that it was in black and white gave it much more power. The difference is um, when you get a word that comes in visual, you have to go back to the Lord. I went and said, why are you showing me this? You have to go back. Sometimes he'll tell you, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes it's for you and sometimes it's for someone else. Sometimes it's just to pray. Sometimes it's to warn you. I had an experience uh, digging through my journals. I ran across the one I had been working for a church, um, several churches. I did the books for several churches. And there was um, a new, uh, one le pastor had stepped down. There was a whole new leadership. And I knew that my time was short because I was, uh, I was just helping them transition. And I wake up from this dream in the morning. And you, I can tell the difference when it's just a dream that's just bizarre and when it's the Lord trying to impress me. I, it is a rainy day, and there are people walking up and down the street, and they're all carrying takeout. You know the bags they give you when after you've eaten and the leftovers, they're all carrying takeout. I look at my hands, and I have takeout. And I'm standing in the middle of the street, and there's this giant bus next to me. And I step in front of the bus and look down the street, and here comes this giant bear coming at us. And I stand up, and I'm yelling at all the people, because I realize in my hand, I'm now lunch for the bear, because I'm holding food. And I drop the food, and I'm yelling at all the people, put down your takeout and get on the bus. And, you know, they all just keep going like I'm not even talking. And I'm, I'm shaking them and telling them, get on the bus, put down the takeout. And nobody listens. And I get on the bus, and the bus takes off. And I went, huh, I wonder what that means. And I was just kind of stunned. Um, takeout, buses, bears. So... I go and we're collecting the offering and I'm sitting in front of one of the elders and we're counting the money. And he says, I said, I just had this really bizarre dream. And I share the dream and he goes, oh my God, I'm so glad the Lord already told you we were firing you today. <laughs> it's like, oh, put down what's in your hand and get on the bus and get out of Dodge. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, I'm out. And uh, yeah. Well, they didn't say fired. They said, we're just, you know, replacing you. You know, we do that nicely. Um, we're letting you go. But, he, see, he was warning me. There was nothing about that, that, that I could have done differently. I couldn't have changed the circumstances that were there. He was warning me. He was telling me, this is coming. In retrospect, I realized what it was. But at the time, it was like, huh, I wonder what that means. You, you learn over time what those feelings are. It's like, oh, that's not good. Something's coming. And he'll show you 
in imagery and language that is specific to you, the things that you would understand, the things that are, um, it's like you create, like two twins, you know, who create a language between them. The Lord and I have a language. You know, I, I know you've all seen the, the prophetic books that tell you, okay, bears mean this, and buses mean that, and, and to somewhat, that is true. But most of the time, my experience is, is he knows exactly how to talk to me. He knows exactly how to show me. A lot I don't understand of what he shows me. But the danger in that is, and I will, I will attest I have done this, I have interpreted wrong. Be very careful. 90% of what the Lord will show you will be for you to intercede or to um, just go back to the Lord, to encourage the person, not necessarily to give it. If the Lord says give it, give it in the purest form and articulate it as specific as you can because their language is different than yours. So they may know exactly what that imagery is that you don't know. Um, and you can always go, well, I thought this might mean, or the, I feel like the Spirit was saying this meant. But don't, I highly don't recommend the Lord say it. You know, it, that's dangerous territory. Let them, let them, if the Lord says share, let them just receive it. Let them go to the Lord and find the answer that you're looking for. The difference between a kingdom version, a vision that is personal for you um, or for someone else versus one that is specifically corporate. Corporate visions generally come with a great deal of power. They come with a great deal of consequence. And most of the time you don't understand because you don't have all the pieces, especially corporately. Before we came to Florida, we were called to come to build a church. And the Lord woke me up with this vision. It shook me so hard that Gary had to pray for me to even get up. I could not get up and go to work. Physically could not do it. And I'm going to read that word. And I'm going to let you, we're going to explore where I seriously missed it. Because I think it's good to know where we make our mistakes so that we learn what doesn't, what you shouldn't say, what you should say, what you should pray for. I'm just going to read you the vision. I was viewing a group of people who, in what looked like a basement, almost a tri-level. And they were making a meal. I was at the upper top. They were talking and working together. I was viewing from another dark room. Difficult to explain watching and acting in the dream at the same time. I walked out of the, out of the lit room with a group of people, and I walked past this dark, damp room. I looked into the corner of the room was a pool of water. I saw a baby lying in the water with all kinds of debris frolling around it, trash, wood, etc. I discounted the baby, feeling it was dead. I walked back to the others, continued in fellowship. Then I walked back into the dark room and noticed the baby again. I decided that someone should take it out of the water. I picked up the baby. It was gray and cold. As I did so, the child moved in my arms. Heart struck, I held it to my chest, ran up a flight of stairs to an area outside the building. Outside it looked like a war zone. Falling buildings, smoke, water everywhere. I crawled over chunks of concrete, holding the child as close as possible. 
over under the wood and rubble. After what seemed like an eternity, I arrived at an opening with people in it. I desperately begged them to help me. I called on a cell phone trying to get help. Going from person to person trying to get them to tell me where we were. But there was no response, either by choice or that they didn't know. That was the vision. I didn't know what to do with that. I knew it was corporate. I can tell you my first response was, I'm going to Florida, and there's going to be a disaster, and we're there to save all these people from this disaster. So I got here, and I contacted the disaster preparedness. <laughs> I did. and. Um, I would buy cases of water, and I was living with all of these people that came down together, and they kept drinking my water, and I was trying to save it for people, and in my car was sleeping bags and medical supplies, and I was ready for the disaster. And because I kept seeing it, it was so vivid. I was living, when you have a vision like that, it's as real as if it's happening to you. And the baby I really thought was that we were going to miss what God was birthing. We were going to miss it. We did, by the way. But, you know, and I shared this vision with people. So profoundly affected me. Knew it was corporate. And they just thought I was Looney Tunes. Yeah, that's not God. I knew it was God. But what do you do when... What do you do with that? So I silently kept stocking supplies. In retrospect, I, know, I now know over time what those images were. He was telling me it was going to be a disaster, and I had to go anyway. And no matter how hard I tried to rescue it, it didn't matter. People didn't care. When I went out to people, they weren't going to care. They just stared at me. He was t warning me. He was telling the body, this is what's coming. But I didn't know, I had never, that was probably my first corporate word. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to present it. I didn't know, without interpreting, I didn't know the lessons I've learned in time. And so when you, if you're new at any part of this, whether it's prophetic, whether it's you carry the anointing in your hands, or whether you see, or whether you hear, find somebody who's walked this road before, because they could help you miss some of those minefields. I, I ran across an awful lot of minefields that I so could have avoided, but the only other person that I know that saw like I did was equally as woo-woo as I was. So I, you know, she was no help. So <laughs> I needed somebody with some anchor to say, I, I think maybe that might have been, or... Well, let's explore that. Let's go back to the Lord about it. And I mean, I prayed into that. I laid on the floor for hours because I knew it was him. I just didn't know what to do with it. You know, I brought it to the leadership. They didn't know what to do with it either. So as a seer, for me, or any gift, we need to help each other. We need to have a great deal of grace for each other as we learn. That's vitally important to just support each other, understand that they don't see clearly. There are many times it looks to me like I'm looking through a screen door. I can't really see on the other side. Or looking through a smoky room. I'm, I know it's there. I know it's within my grasp, and I can't get it. And sometimes it is so clear, it is so vivid, I can tell you what the color of the shoelaces are. And I can recall it 20 years later. 
I can tell you what that train looked like. I can tell you what my uniform looked like. I can remember their faces. Uh, and that, so that, as I went reading through those journals, it was painful. It was painful because some of those visions were profound. And they had, they had taught me a great deal, sort of painfully. And some of them were amazing. Like the Lord sitting there laughing and talking with me. Every day we meet together at our tree and we laugh and we talk. Because that relationship has been built over time. It is an extraordinary possibility that you can bring heaven and earth together. We only get to do that as human beings reaching up into that realm, pushing beyond where we are right now, and finding those places where the Lord wants to share. And as he shares and trusts you more and you trust him more, more and more opens, more and more realms open more and more possibilities open. So I just ask that we give grace to each other, we learn from each other, we share with each other, because what you get brings me life. What I get brings you life. What we all get from Jesus, we all want. So I just say, I may be a little woo-woo, but I'm okay with that. I really am okay with that. Because I see it differently does not make it wrong. It just makes it different. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to identitychurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You may also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages. Read from the Bible, take notes, connect with us on the social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church.